ಸಾಕ್ಷಾತ್ಮಭೂತ ಗುರು ಪ್ರಸಾದ ಅಹಂ ವಿಮುಕ್ತೋಸ್ಮಿ ಶರೀರ ಬಂಧಾತ್ ಸರ್ವೋಪದೇಷ್ಟು ಪುರುಷೋತ್ತಮ ತಸ್ಯಾನ್ಗೇ ಪದ್ಮ ಪ್ರಣತೋಸ್ಮಿ ನಿತ್ಯ ಪ್ರಹ್ಲಾದ ನಾರದ ಪರಾಸರ ಪುಂಡರೀಕ ವ್ಯಾಸಾಮೃಶ ಸುಖ ಸೌನಕ ಭೀಷ್ಮ ಧಾಲ್ಯಾನ್ ರುಕ್ಮಾಂಗ ಉದವ ಭೀಷ್ಮ ಪಲ್ಗುನಾದೀನ್ ಪುಣ್ಯಾನಿಮಂ ಪರಮ ಭಾಗವತ ನಮಿ ಜನ್ಮಾದಿ ಅಸ್ಥೋ ಅನ್ವಯ ಇದರ ಸಚ್ಚ ಅರ್ಥೇಶು ಅಭಿಜ್ಞಾಸ್ವರಾಟ್ ತೇನೆ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಹೃದಯ ಆದಿ ಹವೆಯೇ ಮುಖ್ಯಂತಿಯ ಸೂರಯ ತೇಜೋ ವಾರಿ ಮೃತಾ ಮೃತ ವಿನಿಮಯೋ ಯತ್ರ ತ್ರಿಸರ್ಗೋ ಮೃತ ಧಾಮನಾ ಸ್ವೇನ ಸದಾ ನಿರಸ್ತ ಕುಹಂ ಸತ್ಯಂ ಪರಂ ಧೀಮಹಿ ಧರ್ಮ ಪ್ರೋಚಿತ ಕೈತವ ಅತ್ರ ಪರಮೋ ನಿರ್ಮತ್ಸರಾಂ ಸಖಾ ವೇದ್ಯಂ ವಾಸ್ತವಮತ್ರ ವಸ್ತು ಶಿವದಂ ತಾಪತ್ರಯೋ ಮೂಲನ ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ ಭಾಗವತೆ ಮಹಾಮುನಿ ಕೃತ್ಕಂ ವಾ ಪರೈರೀಶ್ವರ ಸದ್ಯೋ ಹೃದಯ ಅವರ್ಜ್ಯತೆ ಅತ್ರ ಕೃತಿ ಶುಶ್ರೂಷಿ ತಕ್ಷಣಾತ್ ನಿಗಮ ಕಲ್ಪತರೋರ್ಗಳಿತ ಫಲಂ ಸುಖ ಮುಖಾದ್ ಅಮೃತ ಧ್ರುವ ಸಂಯುಕ್ತ ವಿಪದ ಭಾಗವತ ರಸಮಾಳಯ ಮೂರಹೋ ರಸಿಕಾ ಭುವಿ ಭಾವುಕಾ ನಾರಾಯಣ ನಮಸ್ಕೃತ ನರಂ ಚೈವ ನರೋತ್ತಮ ದೇವಿ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ವ್ಯಾಸ ತಥೋ ಜಯ ಮುದೀರೇತ್ ವಾಸುದೇವೇ ಭಗವತಿ ಭಕ್ತಿಯೋಗ ಪ್ರಯೋಜಿತ ಜನಯಾತಿ ಆಸು ವೈರಾಗ್ಯ ಜ್ಞಾನ ಚಯತ್ ಅಹೈತುಕ ಶೃಣ್ವತ ಸ್ವಕಥ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪುಣ್ಯಶ್ರವಣ ಕೀರ್ತನ ಹೃದಯಂತಸ್ಥೋ ಹಿ ಅಭದ್ರಾಣಿ ವಿಧುನೋತಿ ಸುಹೃತ್ಸತಾಂ ನಷ್ಟಪ್ರಾಯು ಅಭದ್ರೇಶು ನಿತ್ಯ ಬಾಹವತ ಸೇವೆಯ ಬಹವತಿ ಉತ್ತಮ ಶ್ಲೋಕೆ ಭಕ್ತಿರ್ಭವತಿ ನ ಇಷ್ಟಕಿ ವಾಸುದೇವ ಪರ ವೇದ ವಾಸುದೇವ ಪರಾಮಕ ವಾಸುದೇವ ಪರ ಯೋಗ ವಾಸುದೇವ ಪರ ಕ್ರಿಯಾ ವಾಸುದೇವ ಪರ ಜ್ಞಾನ ವಾಸುದೇವ ಪರಂ ತಪ ವಾಸುದೇವ ಪರೋ ಧರ್ಮ ವಾಸುದೇವ ಪರ ಗತಿ ಕೃಷ್ಣಾಯ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ದೇವೃಕಿ ನಂದನಾಯ ಚ ನಂದ ಗೋಪಕುಮಾರಾಯ ಗೋವಿಂದಾಯ ನಮೋ ನಮಃ ನಾಮ ಸಂಕೀರ್ತನೆಯ ಸರ್ವ ಪಾಪ ಪ್ರಣಾಶನ ಪ್ರಣಾಮ ದುಃಖ ಸಮನತ್ತ ನಮಿ ಹರಿಂ ಪರಂ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ ಹರಿ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ ಹರಿ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ ಹರಿ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ ಹರಿ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ ಹರಿ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ ಹರಿ ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ ಭಾಗವತಂ ಕಿ ಜೈ ಸಮೋಹಂ ಸರ್ವೂತು ನಮೇ ದ್ವೇಷ್ಯಸ್ತಿ ನೋ ಪ್ರಿಯ ಇನ್ ಭಗವದ್ಗೀತ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಸೇಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ ನೈನ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಭಗವದ್ಗೀತ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಸೇಸ್ ದಟ್ ಐ ಎನ್ ವಿ ನೋ ಒನ್ ನಾರ್ ಐಮ್ ಐ ಪಾರ್ಷಲ್ ಟು ಎನಿ ಒನ್ ಸಮೋಹಂ ಸರ್ವೂತು ಐಮ್ ಈಕ್ವಲ್ ಟು ಆಲ್ ಆಂಡ್ ವಿ ಸೋ ಹೌ ಒನ್ ಶುಡ್ ಟ್ರೈ ಟು try to have any sort of understanding or relationship with others not based on their guna but based on their relationship many times people get into the mind situation where they ask this question why this is happening to me why i am being very good and god is treating me like this and whereas that person is not that good not devoted that person is being doing well sort of situational questions comes in our mind is god being partial but god is not partial samoham sarva bhuteshu or he doesn't have any envy towards anyone the very important point that we need to understand here is that when it comes to friendship when it's come to relationship it is always good to have that kind of relationship based on not based on the guna but based on swarupa there are two terms very important that we need to learn 
to have a healthy relationship, especially when it comes to God, we can apply this. That is Swarupa Krita Dhasyam, Guna Krita Dhasyam. There are two things Swarupa Krita Dhasyam, Guna Krita Dhasyam. Guna Krita Dhasyam, Guna means the qualities or a character. So we surrender to someone, we like someone, we have friendship with someone. Why? Because this person is very good. He is a nice person. He is a wonderful person. He has these his qualities. Therefore, I have a relationship with this person. And that is called Guna Krita Dasyam. Whereas the another relationship is called Swarupa Krita Dasyam. Swarupa Krita Dasyam meaning I have a relationship with this person not based on the gunas that they have, but I have this relationship with this person because he is so and so for me. That's all. Therefore, I have this relationship. If we apply the same thing in our relationship with God, then we will not have any confusion why God does these things. And even if I apply the same principle in our relation on this material relationship that we all have, our relationship will not be ending with frustration. Let's understand a little more thing. I may be a good person because of my good characters, good behavior, the way that I'm talking to someone, the way I'm dealing with things, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. These are all the qualities that I might possess. And some might be, some people might get attracted to that one, saying that this is a wonderful person because he has these, these, these qualities. Now, the qualities might change, right? The qualities might change. Tomorrow, I may be a totally an opposite person. When my qualities have changed, then what's going to happen to the relationship I, someone had with me, right? As a good friend, as a guide and so forth. It's going to be it's going to be in jeopardy. That relationship is going to be on jeopardy. And that's how most of the relationship breaks. When I talk of, talking about relationship that goes for a lifelong period, that relationship is special, not the relationship that comes and goes. Okay, there are many relationships that comes and goes, you know, that has its own place. But then when it comes to the relationship like brothers and sisters, husband and wife, parent and children, and all this relationship, the, the thick relationship that one has, if that has to be prolonged to the longer term, then one has to be based, that relationship should be based on Swarupa Krita, Swarupa Krita Dhasyam, not on the Guna Krita Dhasyam. Because if I have a, some bad feelings or something my sister, my brother, my parent does not behave and they have changed, then obviously that relationship is going to be damaged. If you go, if we go with the Gunakrita Dasya. But if I apply, nevertheless, this is my mother, this is my sister, this is my brother, this is my so and so. If you based on that, then your guna, you're not basing on your guna, however the guna changes or doesn't change, it doesn't affect our relationship. Right? Now, applying the same thing with Krishna, with God. God is doing everything for me. He is Gunavan. He is wonderful. He is giving me everything. Therefore, I pray to God. That means you are praising, you are having a relationship with God based on the Guna that He has. He has shown to you, to us. Therefore, I pray to God. Therefore, I do everything for God. Therefore, I am giving donation to God. Therefore, I am serving at the temple. Right? If any of those gunas is being blocked for whatever reason, then there should be some, we'll be going through some sort of questions and doubts. What happened? Until yesterday, God was good with me. Today, something is not good. Therefore, that relationship becomes a questionable thing. Now, when we apply God, irrespective of how are he with me, he is my supreme father. He is my supreme mother. He is my guardian. He is everything for me. Then, however the things changes in the way that God reacts to, in the, in the way that God acts to us or deals with us, 
it's not affect at all we don't get affect at all in that relationship with god never ever a relation therefore this is a beautiful section that comes in the ramayana in ramayana uh, when lord ram and mother sita along with lakshmana where they were traveling to different different places they came to a ashram of of uh, this wonderful wonderful austrian lady a woman anushuya anushuya when they came to the anushuya ashram and they were there and sita and anushuya had a conversation in the conversation anushuya was asking mother sita i heard your marriage went very nicely i couldn't attend your marriage could you please explain to me the uh, event that took place everything i like to hear from you and mother sita explained so in detail in sita kalyana when or in if you read valmiki ramayana in sita kalyana when you know when um, janaka maharaj and rama goes to janaka puri and uh, all those things happen and the marriage happens and the whole the the, the prakarana that the whole context or the whole subject matter about the uh, sita kalyana was very short balmik did not give more details at that particular right after the marriage he should have given more details about how the marriage happened but he did not give more details in that section where a elaborate discussion about sita kalyana marriage of sita is put when the conversation happened between mother sita and anushuya when anushuya asked about it tell me about your marriage i want to know about your marriage and that's when mother sita explained lot of things about how the details about the marriage happened as an anushuya anushuya was praising mother sita so much so that you are such a wonderful wife chaste wife good character amazing personality full of patience full of tolerance etc etc right he said dear wonderful wife and ideal wife and mother sita said well thank you for telling all this thing but unfortunately you whatever you are saying doesn't make me feel comfortable because why rama had wonderful qualities he has beautiful wonderful qualities and me being good with him is not a doubt or question going to be arised if someone is good and what's the problem of me not being good with this person right so if someone is good we are obviously going to be good with that person so rama is with wonderful qualities for me to be a nice wife accommodative wife well behaved wife etc etc it's not a big thing because rama has this quality i should have been praised considering rama is opposite of his qualities then if i whatever you said about me if i was like that then i am great in this great there's nothing in this in this matter there's nothing you should appreciate about me because rama has as a wonderful qualities so our our friendship our relationships that we have with our loved one it depends on it is not depends on their quality qualities plays a very important role not i'm not saying that it's not there but when we think about on a higher level then the relationship matters for me rather than the guna that's been exhibited in very beautifully in ramayana in this particular section therefore over here what we are going to see, what we saw in the last session also based on based on how we want to be with the lord accordingly he reciprocate to us right if i want to have krishna as my father he reciprocate as a father if i want to have krishna as my son he becomes our son if i want krishna as my advisor or a friend he becomes as a friend if you want be a krishna to my relative we can be krishna's relative interestingly if i want krishna to be an enemy krishna reciprocate for that also reciprocate reciprocate for all all this also so it just based on what we want how we want to connect with god that's how he is going to reciprocate in that way is samoham sarvabhuteshu 
in that way is samo samo means it doesn't restrict the vaikuntha prapti meaning who should get moksha who should not get moksha if you get, if you if you fast more you get moksha if you don't fast you only do little fasting you don't get moksha if you give more donation you get moksha if you don't give donation you won't get moksha krishna does not base any of these things what he sees is samoham he sees everyone equally he sees are you devoted to me ye bhajante tu ma bhaktya mai teshu chapyaham he says that all i see is are you devoted to me is the devotion is the factor and the devotion can be coming in any forms one can take a form of wanting to be an enemy to krishna and that's exactly what we are where we are entering into today's session right so when these questions were asked and then uh, sukadev goswami to parishit maharaj told that let me narrate to you a conversation that happened between narada muni and yudhishthira maharaj yudhishthira maharaj asked the same question how god can be partial how can he do this one so forth therefore narada told yudhishthira that your cousins shishupal and dandavakra your cousin actually were associates of lord vishnu because of a curse they became like this now yudhishthira was thinking what my cousin you know better than they are my cousin you know better than me about my cousin so this is very interesting point that we have to note here sometimes in our relationship we think that we know our spouse our children our brother our uncle whoever we think we know this person better but then the truth is hardly we know anyone right hardly we know anyone we know we don't know much about anyone even within the family how much do we know about others we might know what they like to eat what they don't like to eat we might know how to trigger their anger etc those things are all yes we might know a little bit about those things but in depth we don't know that person anyone we really don't know and what to speak about their previous lives and previous lives and many lives where they are coming from why they are behaving the way that they are behaving with us right we don't know any of this thing so like narada muni they don't see a a, a, a small portion of uh sishupal and dandavakra and etc they go beyond the extent about the person more than what we could really know this person and then when uh, narada muni told that they have been cursed they were the associate of vishnu in vaikuntha they are associate of vishnu in vaikuntha and they have been cursed yes prabhu ji okay thank you for letting me know that um now yudhishthira maharaj asked the question what kind of curse did they get how how did they get being a vishnu bhaktas being an associate of vishnu being in vaikuntha how is it even possible that they have to come down into this world and take birth like an um, uh, opponent or an uh, enemy of vishnu what what is all this i just completely uh, bewildered from what you're saying narada muni could you please explain to me and now the story starts narada muni says well there are four sons of lord brahma sanaka sanandana sanatana sanat kumara there are four sons of brahma they are wandering all over the different planetary system and one time they had to come they visit wanted to visit vishnu loka vaikuntha so they came they came to vaikuntha the vaikuntha has different entrances and every entrance has two gods every entrance has two gods and they passed through all the gates everyone they didn't nicely welcome them they opened the door they they they, they entered each pass through every gate and they came to another gate final gate and this gate was guarded by the associate servants of vishnu narayana their name was 
Jaya and Vijaya. They were two doorkeepers, gatekeepers. They were taking care of the Vaikuntha gate. And as these four boys were, they were young boys, small boys, but brilliant. Even though they, I said small boy, but they are aged, but because of their knowledge, because of their austerity, they always looked like a five, six year old young boys, small boys. They were coming when they came to this final gate and Jaya and Vijaya, who are the doorkeeper, gate, you know, the, the, the protecting the Vaikuntha, they stopped them, saying that they are not allowed to enter inside. And as soon as, as soon as these boys, they heard that they are not allowed to enter, they thought they got angry. They really became very angry, and they said one of the uh, four boys, Sanandana, he said, "You are foolish doorkeepers." You are foolish doorkeepers. You you've been influenced by mode of passion and ignorance. Looks like you are not fit to be here in Vaikuntha. You are fit to be an asura. You should be born as asura. Therefore, we curse you that you will become asura. You will fall down from your position being here, and be in the material world. You will take three births before you can ever return back into this world. When as soon as the curse has been, it's been they have been cursed, then Jaya and Vijaya, or the goat gate, then the gatekeeper, they really become very fearful. They become very fearful about the situation. And they happily accepted the curse and we saw these things in the past also the details of what happened at that point of time now here those are the jaya and vijaya who are born as sons of diti as iranya kashipu and hiranya aksha iranya kashipu was the older brother and iranya aksha was the younger brother because they are born to diti they call dhaityas they are called the dhaityas and for that reason, for them, they to kill them, the, the Lord took an avatara. We already saw in the past how the Lord took a varaha avatara and killed Iranyaksha. Now, the Lord took an avatara, a special avatara called Narasimha avatara, and then he incarnated Narasimha, and then he killed Hiranyakashipu. These are the story, this is the way that Bhagavatam goes and takes Later to the details, but Narada is explaining this thing to Yudhishthira Maharaj. And before that, uh, Hiranyakashipu had a son whose name was Prahlad. And he was a great devotee, very pious person, very nice person. And he was being blessed by the Lord. By the Lord killed Hiranyakashipu. So the first birth they took was Hiranyakashipu and Hiranya Aksha in Satya Yuga. In Trayata Yuga, the same Jaya and Vijaya appeared during the period of Rama, in Rama Avatara, in Ramayana, as, who knows, any children knows here? Who were there in Ramayana, Jaya and Vijaya? Ravana and Kumbhakarna. Yes, Ravana and Kumbhakarna, correct? Yes. They were born as Ravana and Kumbhakarna. And in the in the Dvapara Yuga, during Krishna's pastime, now they again appeared. Someone else can tell who are they, who were they? Jaya and Vijaya. Dandavakra and Sushupal. Dandavakra and Sushupal. Thank you very much. So you see, they appeared in different 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 yugas and then they were against Vishnu and after that they returned back to their spiritual world and received their services over there. Now when Narada Muni was explaining these things he did mention that the Prahlad was given hard time by Hiranyakashipu, his father. When he said this one Yudhishthira Maharaj asked 
why was there an enmity between father and son? You know, father and son, how can the father and son become enemies? How is that even possible? How is that Prahlad Maharaj was such a, became a, such a wonderful devotee? Could you please explain to me? I want to learn more about what happened in detail. And Narada Muni said, well, yes. Hiranyak Aksha was killed by Varahade. He was killed by Varahade. And Hiranyak Kashyapu became very, very angry. Very angry. His anger had no limit. Blazing anger. The smokes were coming, you know, if sometimes, you know, if someone gets really angry, you can see their eyes are become red and you, their ears are become hot. Like pretty much the smoke has to come out. That's all. It's not visible. But really something like that. And they speak really uh, heavily, harshly, scream like anything. They bite their teeth and they look something like, you know, the, uh, the eyebrows raises up. You know, if you, you can see all these things, the facial expressions and things, what happens when someone gets angry, right? Everything goes in all different, all different direction. The whole face becomes like, you know, something else. And all sort of things happens when a person really gets angry. So think about if we are nowhere close to Hiranyakashipu, if we ourselves can exhibit our anger in all those different forms, think about Hiranyakashipu. He is not an ordinary person, right? Why is not an ordinary person? Because he can have, he cannot, he's not an ordinary person because he is going to combat, going to fight directly with the Supreme Lord. Okay? He's going to fight directly with the Can you imagine fighting with the Lord? Right? Cannot even imagine like this. We can fight, uh, we can fight with small, small things, you know, but we, we cannot fight with the Lord. Many people would talk, if you want to really be an atheistic person, we have to be like Hiranyakashipu. We have to be like Ravana. We have to be like this, Kamsa. We have to be like this. And we simply speaking about, I don't believe in God. I don't believe in God. God does not exist, etc., etc. I mean, these are the real atheistic people who are ready to challenge God. If you are an atheist, challenge God directly, ready to fight with God. Right? The God will appear to fight with you and be prepared for it. The God does not come to these atheistic people of this current age because they are not really atheistic people. They are confused people. They project themselves to be atheistic. But they really, they are not really fully atheistic people. The real atheistic people are Hiranyakashipu, Kamsa, Dandavakra, Shishupal, and so forth. So Hiranyakashipu was so much in anger, very angry. And he couldn't control his anger because he lost his brother. Because his brother was working really hard for accumulating wealth for his brother, Hiranyakashipu. Right? So he was working hard. He loved his brother so much. But now he is cut off and fell like a tree down by Vishnu in this form. But what happened was because Irini Aksha was dead and all his friends, all his wives, Irini Aksha's wife, his mother, Diti, everyone was gathered there around the body and they were all crying on Irini Aksha's body. They were all crying. They don't know what to do because of their beloved husband is gone. The son is passed and what to do now. And at that point of time, Hiranyakashipu came to the spot. When he saw that his mother, Diti, is crying and his wife was also Rushabhanu. Hiranyaksha's wife's name was Rushabhanu. She was also weeping and crying and helplessly. His sister in law was crying. So Hiranyakashipu wanted to console them. He said, now is a very important point. This section is a very beautiful section. Why it's a very beautiful section is because Irani Kashipu is speaking a philosophy here. Right? We might be thinking that Irani Kashipu does not know anything, right? But while, while this conversation that how Irani Kashipu consoled his mother, his sister-in-law, is quite profound by itself. Because what he's speaking here is Bhagavad Gita. What Irani Kashipu is going to speak now to convince and console the family members is nothing but Bhagavad Gita. So he said, he was just saying that, my dear mother, my dear sister-in-law, 
பூத்தானாமிக சம்வாச பிரபாயாமிவ சூயத்தே சூவ்ரத்தே இட் சேஸ் தட் மை டியர் மதர் லைக் ஹவு வி ஆல் கோ டு ரெஸ்டாரண்ட் ரைட் வி சோ டு ரெஸ்டாரண்ட் when we go to the restaurant we meet with some people and we get associate with new people and we sit and chat with that person you know now that we have so many there is uh, uh people find their you know spouse people find their relations in the coffee bar or in some place like this right so they go there and sit there and find someone talk to that person and then after the conversation over you you are drinking of tea or coffee or whatever it is it's done you say bye to that person you get out of the person okay right? my dear mother it's like a restaurant family is like a restaurant we all come together for eating purpose or drinking water but after that after our program is done we get out of the restaurant we are travelers we keep traveling as we keep traveling we get association of some people and we be that be with that person for some period of time after that the destination comes we move on to the next one we move on to the next one in this way we come together with a family also yes so hiranyakashipu actually told bhagavatam no 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 hiranyakashipu did not say bhagavatam hiranyakashipu is saying what is there we read in what we read in bhagavad gita same thing he is telling to his mother yes, and his, so why so why did narshima kill hiranyakashipu you, you got to wait to hear that okay okay now he is talking this one he said the spirit soul the living entity has to die they cannot live eternally this is a important point please understand you this is all spoken by hiranyakashipu anyone who is jata se hi dro mrityu dro mrityu janma janma mrityu akvati so he says that anyone who is born has to die anyone who dies have to take birth now why you are lamenting for such things there's nothing to lament for such situations like this we all come together we will die and whoever is dead is going to be born is one it the mind which is making us to feel worried about these movements that's happening in our life everything the body is made of five elements but atma is not the mind is confusing people telling this these are good people and these are bad people these are your enemies and these are your friends because of this you will suffer because of this you will become happy is a mind who sticks everything try to understand my dear mother try to understand my dear sister la there is nothing to lament for death birth or any miseries that we are going through in our life because everything that's happening is only to the body not to the atma sounds familiar bhagavad gita therefore in ekashipu said i am my dear mother let me tell you a story i am going to tell you a story what happened was yamaraj who is yamaraj everyone knows god of death okay so he is going to tell a story hiranyakashipu is going to tell a story now in a state called ushinara a state called ushinara a place called ushinara there lived there was a king suyagnya this name was suyagnya what happened in the battle suyagnya was killed by the enemies when suyagnya was dead his body was lying down there his friends and relatives they all came down they came to the spot and they were lamenting and crying on the dead body of suyagnya they were thinking who is going to take care of us who is going to protect us there's no one else here what's going to happen to my life if you are not there the queens were crying out loudly the tears were blow you know you know flowing out from their eyes they are hitting their chest hitting their forehead and their their kumkumam was all just shattering everywhere so they were when the time came they were saying that let me let us we have to do the ritualistic whatever needs to be done so we have to take the body so we can do the final rites for the dead suyagnya but the wives were not leaving the body of their husband 
they were holding to the body, saying that we cannot leave our husband. We won't leave our husband. So they don't want to leave the dead body. He's our hero. He's our protector. He's our friend. How can we let him go? We cannot let him go. How can we see his body being burnt in fire? We will not let it happen. And they continued lamenting over the dead body. While the queen were lamenting on the dead body of the king, they were crying. Yamaraj, at that point, he took a form of a small young boy. He took a form of a young boy and he came to the spot. He approached the relatives, closed the dead body and started speaking. He started speaking. He said, Yamaraj said, how it is amazing to see you people are older than me. That young boy is speaking to the, the older people who are there. Suyagnya's wives and relatives. You people are older than me. You are experienced hundreds and thousand times than me. You have seen many people dying. You have seen many people have born, uh, taken many birth, taken birth. And how is that you are lamenting on someone who's passed away? How can you lament like this? There is no any rule that anyone can live forever. There is no rule. There is nothing can be dead. No one lives forever. One has to die. And how they die, all the things are just a vyajam. Uh, vyajam means one might die because of, I don't know, during the fight, like your husband. One might die because of a heart attack. One might die because of this reason. One might die, however they die. They have to die somehow or the other, one has to die. That's a point here. So your husband is dead. You are elderly, you should have sense that you should not cry. You should not be crying. Don't become weaker because your husband was not your protector. You think your husband was your protector. If he was a protector, he could have protected himself first. When he himself cannot protect, how can he become your protector? Right? Many times in our life, we invest, we put so much of faith on something. My bank balance will protect me, will save me. My husband, my parent, my brother, my so-and-so will protect me at any given situation. Yes, that's true. They can protect, but they have a limitation how much they can protect. They are not God. They, no one can protect us from death. That's, 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 a, that's a known fact. That's a known fact. And even when we go to doctors, sometimes doctors say this one. Well, pray to God. We tried everything that we could. It's not in our hands. Pray to God. Right? Like that, you people are screaming and hitting your head and hitting your chest saying that who is going to take care of you? Who is going to be your protector? Who is going to be your etc. etc. But then if this person was your protector, he should have protected himself first. When he himself cannot save from the death, clutches of death, how could he is going to protect you? That's not possible. It's not possible. So the real protector is the Supreme Lord who can give protection to everyone. He can give protection to the child who is not even born. What to speak about? We are, we are all born and walking and talking and doing things. We can even protect a child who is not born yet. We know the story of Parikshit Maharaj. Where Parikshit Maharaj was not born, but he was protected. Right? So even for, we think that we are protecting our child. Right? But it's really the Lord. Because we don't know what's going on inside our womb. When the child, we are carrying a child. When the mother carries a child inside. We, are come, we can only do some precautionary things that whatever we can do, as per whatever we advise us that we get from our friends and family members. But then real protection comes from the Supreme Lord. He is the one who is going to protect even the baby within, which is inside. Therefore, my dear mother, my dear mothers, the, the, the Yamaraj is in the form of a small boy is addressing this ladies, Suyagnya's wife, is saying, my dear mothers, you shouldn't be lamenting. Lord will protect everyone because he is a creator. When he is created, he has a responsibility, responsibility to also to protect. 
unlike nowadays we see the whole culture has changed people doesn't get married but they have children right even people who get married when they have children they are, they are not having any responsibilities for that matter they just don't even care about wanting to welfare of their children right for the sake of having children somehow they have a children but they are not completely being a protector they are not being a protector and they they can only create they don't want to be a maintainer they don't want to take responsibility of maintaining the children they don't want to get into any of sort of these things right but that is not the grahastha ashram that is not the dharma of the grahastha grahastha ashram means husband and wife together has a complete responsibility to first take up take care of their own family charity starts from home as they say charity starts from home i do all charity to outside but i don't even care for my family members i don't even care of my children i don't care for my wife i don't care for my husband but i care for other people outside and that is not what the dharma shastra say and that is not what the ideal grahastha life means one has to care for outside world also provided you take care of your family also in the path of spirituality if you cannot lead your families in the path of spirituality then what's the point of you taking care of others therefore it's very important for grahasthas to start the charity from their home i start charity from my home by providing a spiritual guidance spiritual support to husband spiritual support to wife spiritual support to my children then when i stabilize that then you extend yourself to others if this is not stabilized but we extend outside then there's going to be a mismatch there's going to be a problem there's no consistency in what we speak what we deliver what we do therefore this boy was telling that understand that the material creation the entire thing is created by the supreme lord that who is created will take care of you also there's nothing to be worried the safety and protection only comes from the lord for example the boy is giving an example now he gives an example that if someone drops a 100 100 bill he doesn't speak in you know, bhagavatam does not speak about dollars or rupees or anything just an analogy has been given here if you drop a money i'm just giving an example of 100 dollars a bill when you're walking it fell off and the bill is lying on the public street on the street right where every one can see it right yet this money is not been seen by someone someone right money is lying there but still cannot be seen sometimes we have this experience also we might misplace something and we search and search and search and search we never get it but finally we see it's in our pocket right we have multiple pockets now right <laughs> there's a, there is a pocket in the front there's a pocket inside and there is a secret pocket in the back side pocket and now that the back the pockets are also available near the ties right so many pockets are there we want to fill keep on filling in all the pockets right we, we don't want anything be to be outside everything i want to put it in my pocket so we can see this sometimes we, we we think we search for many things and finally find out it's in my pocket therefore he gives an example that you know if you if the lord want to make visible if the lord want to protect someone keep something safe no one can do anything if lord doesn't want to do so he can do so also therefore the security and protection really comes from krishna from god not from anyone else anyone else that we think they are protector and protector and a maintainer or the safety safety provider they are just an instrument in the hands of krishna that's all they are otherwise you see some people live in the uh, jungle but they are living safely where the animals are there but some people live in the city thinking they have the security system in their house right they have cameras everywhere even though they have all the security still problem happens some dangerous thing happens but people doesn't have a security camera people doesn't have any of this thing living happy in the woods nothing happens to them right 
So one should understand every protection is only given by the Lord. No one else can ever protect anyone else. We don't have the capacity to do that. And whoever is giving protection also should understand that I am just an instrument. The real protector is the Supreme Lord. Therefore, this boy was telling, please understand, body is different from Atma. Do not be worried about, do not be lamenting about this thing. Do not be care, crying about the dead body. The Atma is not anywhere closely related to the body because the body is made of Panchabhuta, earth, air, water, fire and ether. And Atma is Sachit Ananda. It is not made of any of these things. Like if you start thinking Atma and body the same, it's like you are living in the householder who is living in a house. They identify themselves to be his house. It is not the true case. I am sitting right now in this in this closed room, right? I, if I start identifying myself as in this room, then it's a wrong identification. It's not right. After the session is over, I'm going to open the door and I'm going to walk out. Then I have no connection with this room at all. Right? Likewise, when my, my time comes, when my project is over. Whatever I need to do, I simply exit this house of body, house of this body. I exit this house, go out, walk out. Now I go out, I'm going to get into another room. I'm not, I'm not here roomless, houseless, right? homeless person. I'm going to get into another room and that another room is another body. Therefore, why you people have to lament for something like this? There's nothing to lament. Like a fire is present in the wood. We can't see the fire within the wood. In, within the wood. But wood, the fire is always present in the wood. But we don't see it. The air is always situated in the mouth and in the nostrils. Cannot be separated. Cannot be separated. Fire and wood cannot be separated. Air cannot be separated from the circulation of the nostrils and, and the mouth. The sky cannot be separated because it's always pervaded everywhere. It's always pervaded everywhere. So the living entities, although encaged within the body, if they think they cannot be separated, that means they are in illusion. The only reason they are thinking they cannot be separated because of the association of the Prakriti due to their previous vasanas and due to their karma. That's the only reason why they think they are this body. Therefore, my dear mother, you are fools. Mudayam anusochatha. Mudayam anusochatha. He says, this boy says that Mudayam anusochatha means you are fool number one. What do you mean by fool number one? Why? Because you are lamenting for something which is not to be lamented. It should not be lamented. The same points where Arjuna made many, many points in Bhagavad Gita, first chapter, until the 10th sloka of the second chapter. And Krishna said, you're fool number one. You're lamenting for something which should not be lamented for. You're fool number one. Now, the life, the prana, which is higher than the atma, sorry, the, 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 the body is lower than the prana. The prana, which is always pervaded in the body, which keeps the body moving. But prana, more than prana, is atma. Atma is greater than prana. Therefore, atma, when it leaves the body, everything is done. Prana in the body is most important substance, the, the, the life air. But that cannot hear. Sometimes people have this idea, you know, as long as you can breathe and breathe out, breathe in and breathe out, you are alive. That means the prana is a cause of one's existence. But if prana is a cause of existence, then prana, you should, we should know that prana cannot hear, prana cannot speak. That means there should be something which is greater than prana. Prana does not have con uh, consciousness. Prana is not conscious being. Right? It's one of the elements. The air is one of the elements. That's all. Now, that which can respond to us should be a conscious being. That is Atma. Atma is beyond the Prana, Pranavayu. Prana, but it is not greater. 
Atma cannot be great by itself. Just now we saw if Atma is greater, if it has all the power, then we have the power of not exiting the body, right? If just imagine the Atma is fully capable of doing anything and everything, first thing we will do is that we will not leave this body. We will settle down in this body. How much ever old we are, we don't want to leave the body. But we know that we are still leaving the body. That means the Atma is not, not capable enough or it's not that powerful where it can retain the body. So what is greater than Atma then? That makes a decision. This is the time. You got to get out of this apartment. You need to get out of this body. And that is the super soul. That is Paramatma. Paramatma as Antaryami, Antaratma, who is a director. He is a director. He is a controller. Right? He is everything. He is the one who completely executes everything when the time comes. When the time comes. Therefore, these five elements, the ten senses, and the combination of with the mind, all those things are all subtle elements or material elements. In other words, they are material elements. Atma is different. These are, Atma is covered by all these different layers of mind, intelligence, false ego. Because of their fruity actives and results that they have carried from their previous lives. The karma, karma vasana, which covers them and make them to identify wrongly that they are this body. I am mm. Indian. I am South Indian. I am American. I am Italian. I am German. Whatever it is. right? It's wrongly gives it. That's how, that's how it covers us and start making differences about you and I. <clears throat> about you and I. The happiness and distress caused by the material senses should be understood that it has meaningless. We get happiness and we get distress. These are the two things constantly happens to us, right? So today is Saturday. I'm excited about it because why? I don't need to work. <clears throat> I don't need to work. A relaxed day and I can do whatever I want except I'm very happy today. Okay? Monday comes. It's old program changes. I'm unhappy today. Why? I have to go back to the routine to go to office, attend meetings, and etc. etc. I'm unhappy today. When the payday comes, I'm happy again. Right? When the payday comes, I'm happy. When after the payday and the money start reducing little, I become unhappy. So Krishna says the same thing, Bhagavad Gita. Right? Uh, now the same thing has been mentioned here by uh, the the boy Yama. Also, the happiness and distress that we are seeing. Krishna says in the third chapter of Bhagavad Gita. Therefore, there's no, it has no meaning. Try to treat them equally. Whatever you're saying, your happiness or distress is all for your mind alone. Your mind. The mind which is connected to the body. The body which have all the senses. The happiness is for the senses. The distress is for the senses. All those things is Master played, a game is played by the mind. Otherwise, the Atma have nothing to do with any of these things. We are all spirit soul, eternal. The body perishes, but the Atma does not perish. Atma does not perish. After saying this one, now Yama, Yamaraj, the small boy, those Suyajnya's wife does not know that this is Yama. This is Yamaraj has come to give them the knowledge, spiritual knowledge. But this boy is saying that, let me tell you a story. Okay? Let me tell you a story about Kulinga bird. Kulinga, there's a different types of bird. One type of bird is called Kulinga bird. And now, Yamaraj, this boy is going to tell a story. Now, there was a hunter who was coming, trying to find you know, food for him to hunt in the forest. He saw, he, he, he put a net to catch some birds. So he put a net and he spread some, you know, whatever the grains are. And one bird of the couple, Kulinga bird, it ca came and got caught into the net. The female bird. The female bird, the husband and wife were there and there were children in the nest, in the, the branches of the tree. They had a very beautiful life. Life was going very nicely. No problem. They had nice children and they get the food. 
the mother goes get the food and feed the children and the husband and wife had a nice conversation the board conversation their life was going very nicely so from somewhere this hunter came he spread the net and put the grain not noticing not being very very uh, aware, having the awareness of this hunter the female bird got caught into the net he got caught into the net and then when the female the wife got caught into the net the husband bird was literally don't know what to do he was lamenting for his wife he was crying he didn't have anyone to help because he can't go and help because he will get caught also and no other birds are coming to help they know if they go they will also get caught it was in a very difficult situation for this husband bird and he was just crying out what is this my situation it's a providence what is the state of this providence uh, what mistake i have done in my life why this happened to me why my wife have to get caught into this one who is going to take care of my children now my wife was speaking to me very sweetly she takes care of me very nicely she gave me nice parathas and sabjis and rotis and you know paneer da you know, all those different things who is going to give me all this thing now i don't know how to cook now <laughs> that's a problem right that's why in the gragastha family life it's very important sometimes people think kitchen is only meant for women okay right? well some of us may not agree to that one because well, which you might be thinking that where well, which world do you are in now kitchens are meant for men not for women prabhu you might tell this one but my point here is traditionally kitchen is meant for is a place for women ladies right is meant for women and uh the the, the husband's duty is to supply whatever is needed for the wife so wife can nicely cook things and take care of the family members right now here this husband was this bird was crying out saying that who is going to take care of these things i don't know to cook the point here is in the gragastha ashram husband should also know to cook wife should also know to cook because there are situations and times where wife should be released from cooking where husband can start cooking at that period of time because the service should continue in the family what therefore is, what is grahastha ashram mean oh sorry to use those terms without explaining what it mean grahastha ashram is graha means house ashram uh, uh, ashram is the stage or status meaning as husband and wife father and mother and children together is called grahastha okay Okay. The first name is husband, father, pati, patni, and then children together. It's called gragastha. They are called gragasthas. Okay. 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 Brahmachari means men who has not married and who is under the guidance of guru. That is brahmachari ashram. Okay. We'll move, skip that one and continue the story. Okay. Now, thank you. Now, therefore, here. this bird was thinking who is going to take care of my children it's my unfortunate situation uh, they are be waiting for the mothers to come thinking that the mother is going to get some food and they are going to have nice food is immature immaturely things have you know turned around this this male the husband bird was screaming and crying and screaming and crying it caught the attention of the hunter it caught the attention of the hunter the hunter immediately took an arrow shot the uh, the other male bird and the male bird got killed and fell off got fell off and this boy was telling this yamaraj in the form of a small boy was telling the story to the queen of suyagnya suyagnya the king you my dear queen or don't be foolish lament over the dead body you have a four fund of knowledge you don't even know whom you are crying for please please hear carefully important point you don't even know whom you are lamenting for 
why are you lamenting? You don't know this person. Why are you lamenting? And then the queen were turning around saying, what do you mean by we don't know this person? This is my husband. Well, if this is how your husband is right there, then why are you lamenting? No, he's, 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 he's not active. Therefore, we are lamenting. Then the boy said, why is not active? Because he's dead. What do you mean by dead? He's not able to do what he used to do. I gave him nice jamun. He's not taking the jamun. I hug him. He's not embracing me back. I kiss him. He's not kissing me. I speak to him nicely. He's not speaking to me nicely. But everything he was doing just yesterday. But he's not doing anything. Then this boy said, that's why I'm telling you, you don't know whom you're lamenting for. Yesterday he was there, he's not here today. Therefore, you're only lamenting to the body, whereas the person is already gone. The person is already gone to his next destination. He's happy born somewhere else, celebrating happy birthday. And you're sitting and lamenting here and crying. Whereas he's been celebrating a big party somewhere else. Already rejected you, already forgot you, already left you. But you are continuing thinking about him. So you don't know why are you lamenting for, whom you are lamenting for. It's a very sad situation. There's, do you know that someone else is going to lament for you very soon? Same situation is going to come to you. Someone else will lament for you. So there's no point in sitting and lamenting like this. There's no point in lamenting like this. Continue. Let the body go. And as this boy was speaking like that, then the body, and then the boy disappeared from the spot. That is none other than Yamaraj. And the wife of Suyagnya, they got this knowledge after understanding the real truth. And they also continued doing the ritual activities. Whatever the funeral things has to be performed, they also continued doing this one. Concluded the story. Hiranyakashipu, please do not forget where we are because sometimes we get lost with this whole thing that we are seeing here. The first thing is the bird story is told by Yamaraj in the form of a small boy. The Yamaraj story is told by Hiranyakashipu. The Hiranyakashipu story is told by Narada Muni to Yudhishthira Maharaj. Now, Narada Muni's story of conversation with Yudhishthira Maharaj is narrated by, actually, Vidura hearing from Maitreya Rishi. This Maitreya Rishi conversation with Vidura is explained by Sutta, Sutta Goswami to the sages of Naimisharanya. And Sutta Goswami Naimisharanya is actually spoken by Sukadev Goswami and Parishit Maharaj. Parishit Maharaj and that Parikshit Maharaj conversation with Sukhade Goswami is told by Sutta Goswami in the sages, among the sages of Naimi Saranya. So there's a story inside, story inside, story inside and story. That is easy that we may forget where we started Bhagavatam. Easily we'll forget. What is we talking about? And suddenly we're speaking about Narada Muni, Yamaraj and all those things. So just to refresh you, we saw discussing from the starting of where Sutta Goswami is explaining these things to everyone. Now, therefore, after this, Hiranyakashipu told this one and everyone everyone stopped uh, lamenting and they all took what did whatever they need to do. After telling the story, now Hiranyakashipu, this is a third chapter of Bhagavatam in the seventh canto where he makes a plan now. Hirene Kashipu makes a plan to become immortal. He's trying to make a plan to become immortal, which is totally contradicting to what he just explained to his mother, so his sister-in-law. Right? Abuji, what is immortal? Immortal means dying. Immortal means not to die. To live forever. Okay. okay? He wants to not die at all. Hirani Kashipu does not want to die. So he's going to make a plan so that he can never die. Okay. What is the plan he's going to make? How he's going to execute it? And 
did he achieve his plan of wanting to be immortal? We will see these things in our next Saturday session. Any questions, discussion? Anyone want to share anything? So what we have seen today, just to quickly summarize, is where the equality, is God equal or not? That is the starting of the seventh canto in the first chapter. That is God is equal to all. It's a very, very important chapter that everyone should really read this chapter, first chapter. And to explain that, we saw the story where Narada Muni is explaining to Yudhishthira Maharaj in that how Jaya Vijaya, the doorkeeper of Vaikuntha, they've been cursed to be born into the world as a demon. And then as a continuation of that one, Yudhishthira Maharaj asked the question, explain to me about why father and son has an enmity. Why such a nice boy, Prahlad, should be tortured like this. Then that went into the story of how Hiranyaksha has been killed by Varahadi. And then we saw the story of Hiranyakashipu explaining, pacifying his mothers and relatives by telling some stories. After telling, after telling one second, one second, after telling the stories, Hiranyakashipu then now is making a plan because even though he told the story, but he had the grudge against Vishnu. Therefore, he wanted to become immortal and kill Vishnu. Why he had this mentality, how these things happen, or our subject matter for next class. Yes, Rukmini, you had a question? Yes, Prabhuji. So it is the what Pralad story is done? No, Pralad is not born yet. Oh. So we will talk those things in our next session, okay? okay. We are just speaking about his father, the oh. great demon, Hiranyakashipu. Okay. So we need to know how great Hiranyakashipu is, right? Before we know about Prala. So that's what we, what we are learning now about Hiranyakashipu. That he's not an ordinary person. He's a great demon in this life. Anything else? Hare Krishna Prabhuji. So, like uh, Jaya Vijaya, did they did they come in Kali Yuga as Jagayan Madhai? Or uh, like uh, Shishupal and Dantavakra were their last births? Yes, Mataji. That's what the, our Sampradaya, Gaudi Vaishnava Sampradaya, says they are the one who appeared at Jagayan Madhai this time also in Kali Yuga. Every, 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 this time when they came here, it all happens by the will and wish of when the Lord comes, he wants to bring everyone. So already, you know, Jaya and Vijaya would have better experience of being an enemy. Therefore, he gave the service opportunity to Jaya and Vijaya to come back again as Jagai and Madai and play that role again. But the approach was totally different this time. For those who for those, if, one second, for those who does not know what the question is, this question is based on the Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's Leela pastime. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is none other than Krishna. So whoever appeared in the Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who appeared 500 years back in West Bengal, whoever appeared during the Mahaprabhu's, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's time, they were all the associates who were part of Krishna Leela, also in Rama Leela. So they all came back again to assist Krishna in the form of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to cultivate bhakti by promoting Nama Sankirtana to make everyone chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Priya Mataji, you want to ask something further? No, Prabhuji, I think you answered it very clearly. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mataji. Was there another question from yes. someone? Prabhuji? Yes. So, but the Jagan Madhai Lila, the 
ராவண கும்பகர்ணா <coughs> so therefore chaitanya mahaprabhu when in kali yuga when he appeared unlike varaha dev unlike hiran uh, uh, narasimha dev unlike lord ram unlike krishna he did not use chakra to kill he did not use any other weapon but then he changed jagai and madai by another weapon okay that weapon are mridanga and kartal right by inducing them into the bhakti by the names of god by nama sankirtan so punish he did not, he did not kill them but he made them a devotee okay. this time okay but but he did, but then jaga then what he jaga mana didn't get a curse no now this time they were blessed they become a great devotee of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, great devotee of Krishna. Hare this time when they, when they appeared, it's not because of their curse, it's because of their assisting Krishna in the Chaitanya's Leela. Okay, Rukmini? Okay, Prabhuji. Okay. Yes, Veena Mataji. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Um, uh, we all know that Atma is immortal and it's going to Continue, after after leaving a body it's going to continue its journey towards uh, krishna's abode but pract- one practical question like uh, when when we go to a lamenting family who has lost a loved one what is the ideal way to approach the family like at that point we cannot say oh don't cry atma is you know it's immortal just a body is we cannot give them all those ideas at that moment so here is the two points one point is one point you can do is that's the right time to give them the spiritual knowledge not to say them not to cry but then you have to make that opportunity and time to educate them that's exactly what has happened in this one that 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 the session that we taught saw today is exactly the same thing we saw but you don't need to be so much so saying that you are fools why are you crying for the lamented lamenting for the dead body atma is gone you are fool number 1 let's not talk like that right but then we can console them talk to them nicely at the same time this is an opportunity for us to make for them for us to make them understand this subject matter of atma is immortal body is mortal so by them by that we are giving them more strength saying that this person is not here but he is somewhere else happily surely he is being somewhere else he is not visible to you but he is somewhere else continuing his project whatever the next project is in that way you take up a duty of whatever you need to do and you do in such a way that if that person would have been here what would you have done for that person okay say for example if some one, one of our loved one is going to leave and then usually you know we want to do the best thing for that person at that last he's going to leave his last breath right he's going to leave and what the best we can speak to that person what are the best thing that we can offer to the person whatever the way that we can do the best we want to do something for that moment because he's going to depart the body my question is why are we waiting until that point to show our love and affection and all this thing we have to lead our life throughout showing our love and affection 
caring for that person. And when we, when the person leaves the body, we will have some satisfaction in our life that at least I listened to this person. I was cooperative with this person. I was happy with this person. Less we had misunderstanding, less we fought with this person. Some satisfaction will be there. So let's, that's the point. The point I'm trying to say here is when a family is going through some lamenta lamenting situation, don't be harsh. Yes, we understand we are all human. But that's an opportunity where we can teach about these things in a palatable, nice way. Make them understand. And the same point can be made them feel comfortable also. Like, well, my husband is somewhere now happily. My child or my brother is somewhere happily. From what you're saying, that makes me feel better now. Is it not? When you, when you make such statement to someone, to make them comfortable that they are not done. They are happy somewhere else. You cannot make them understand until you speak about Atma and body. Make sense, uh, Veena Mataji? Yes, Prabhu. Does it help at all? Yeah, uh, yeah. I think we just need to approach the family when, when, when they have settled down with their crying, I guess. Do, no? Yes, you can, you can do that. And this is also, you can say, tell the same thing even when they are crying. Because I've, I've met with people and families personally, and they're more attentive during that time also. Mm -hmm. And as time goes, believe it or not, they get to the same routine of life. They'll forget. Yeah. So that is a peak time where you can induce the spiritual knowledge to them. We might be thinking, how can I speak this thing? They're crying, right? But once their crying period is over, they're back to normal. They will have that feeling, of course, but it's not the same feeling that they had at that point of time. But whatever you're saying may be very nice to hear, but that's not be an effective thing. So you have to give a punch point, the treatment when the right moment comes like this. Do not feel hesitant to speak things at this time. Mm -hmm. And Krish, when, when Arjuna went through a difficult time, that's when Krishna spoke Bhagavad Gita. Not when you were sitting and having some nice uh, mango juice. Hey, come on, yeah. Arjuna, let me tell you about Bhagavad Gita. You are not the body. You know, let's have mango drink and some popcorns uh, because life is going nice. No, Arjuna was in a difficult situation. Krishna spoke Bhagavad Gita, heavy subject matter. Diti was in a difficult situation. Hiranesh Kashipu spoke this difficult subject matter. Yamara spoke a difficult subject matter to the Suyanya, the, to the wives of the, uh, the king. So do not think like that. Because the message is powerful, it has its own effect. And the message is not our message. It's coming from Bhagavatam. It's coming from Bhagavad Gita, spoken by the Lord. Therefore, it will have an impact, positive impact on the listeners. Yeah, thank you, Prabhu. Hare Krishna, Prabhu. I have one quick question, Prabhu. Uh, in the last session, on uh, one of the Mataji was asking about the liberation. Oh, sorry, who's sorry, speaking? I can't. This is know. Sujana, Prabhu. Hello. Sujana, please. Can, yes. Yeah. Uh, in, I have one quick question from the last session, Prabhu, and uh, one of the Mataji was asking about the liberation. Uh, could you please, uh, different types of liberation, Prabhu, I mean, I would like to know more details on that. Okay, so you, you want to choose which one you want to select? <laughs> I mean, like, you know. <laughs> so, there I mean, are... Like, go ahead, Prabhu. There are, there, are, there are, we saw, there are five types of mokshas that we saw. That is Salokya, Sasti, Samipya, Sarupya, Sayujya. These are the five types of moksha that's been mentioned in the Srimad Bhagavatam also. That means one who happened to live in the same planet or same place where the Supreme Lord we get an opportunity to be with the Supreme Lord in the same place. Sa Lokya. Loka means planet or a place, right? Sa Lokya. 
where we get to live with the Lord in the same place. Salokya Moksha. Sashti. Sashti is where we have the same Shakti, the powers, whatever the Lord has. We also get the same thing. Samipya is where we live very close to the Lord, closely associated mm -hmm. with the Lord. Sarupya is where we get a similar form of the Lord. For example, Jaya and Vijaya, you see, you go to the Vishnu temple. Before you enter the Vishnu temple, right? You, you see the Garda Stamba is there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Garda Stamba. And then after Garda Stamba, Thaya Sanidhi, meaning Lakshmi's Sanidhi is there. So Lakshmi's, uh, uh, the altar is there. Therefore, the very first thing we do is go to the Garda Stamba, pray to the Garda, and then go to the Lakshmi uh, uh, altar, the, the place. And then we get the permission from the Laksh from Lakshmi. And then by then we go to the Lord. Before we go to the Lord, near the entrance, there are exactly like the Lord who is standing in, inside, there'll be two personalities. They are Jaya and Vijaya, four hands, mm -hmm. exactly carrying the Shanka, Chakra, everything, identical, mm -hmm. right? So that is called Sarupiya form. One gets the form of the Supreme Lord, how he is. And the next is called Sayuja. Sayuja Moksha is one, be within the Lord. Be one mm -hmm. within the Lord. They become one with the Lord. And part and parcel of the Lord. Sayuja. These are the five types of Moksha that is there. Okay. Out, of all this, all, out of all these different five types of Moksha, what has been considered, these, all these different things are considered of no use. For the devotees, these are not the primary factors of what moksha I need to attain. The primary focus is what, how I can serve the Lord. Yeah. Service is what they are oriented on, not on, you know, want to be liberated from the sufferings of the world. Rather, they think, I want to be with the Lord to serve the Lord. In that way, the bhakti process mm -hmm. has more higher state, status than any of these moksha that we speak about. Thank you very much, Prabhu. Thank you. Okay. If there is any other questions in the chat, usually Greg used to post some questions. I don't see anything. Okay. If there's no other question, then um, back to... Would yes? I want to ask a question. Okay. We can have a last question. When will you put Prahalad and Narasimha story? And can you add a, a video to it also? <laughs> add a video to it. Okay. We'll see what best we can do. Who was that? I couldn't see the name. Who was Vicky. Vicky. Oh, Vicky and Cherry from India. Yes. Okay. okay, Vicky and Cherry. Thank you very much. We'll see what we can do. Okay. Thank you. Hare okay. Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much. Thank you all very much. Back to, to Ashok Prabhu. I don't think I have any announcements, Prabhu. Uh, Hare okay. Krishna. To thank you. If there is no announcement, I'm, I want one more time. Thank you all very much for daily submitting your chanting log. As I said, it's really, really very impressive to see that. I myself get inspiration by seeing you all doing this very nicely. Please continue to submit your uh, chanting log every day, only for another three end of weeks, sorry, three end of months. And also Narayana Prabhu, who is one of our participants, he has started Telugu uh, crash course, Bhagavad Gita crash course. Uh, today he completed the second session. It's eight week course. If anyone is interested, you can reach out to him or let us know. We'll provide you the details. It happens at Sunday morning, 9 to 10. So you can join and hear in Telugu. And if anyone else, not part of our WhatsApp group, where we post our recordings after the session, also daily Bhagavad Gita, please reach out to Ashok Prabhu in the call. And he can give you the link to join this uh, group where you get uh, uh, details about the programs. With that said, thank you all very much. Have a wonderful rest of the week. We'll meet again to see how Hiranyakashipu is making his plans to be immortal. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.